I recently made a video on recording mandolin, uh, some microphone comparisons and a few tips on techniques to get a good tone when recording mandolin. I wanted to follow that up with a video on how I mix my mandolin tracks, um, both the process of mixing that I use and the plugins that I use to mix mandolin tracks. Again, always with the goal of getting the best possible tone I can out of the instrument. For my DAW, I use Reaper, and all of the plugins that I use are either Reaper stock plugins or free plugins that I've downloaded and installed. Now, in this video, I'm not going to do any kind of tutorial on how to use Reaper or how to use any of these plugins. There are lots and lots of good tutorials available for all of these. I'm simply going to walk through my mixing process and give you a chance to listen to what each of these plugins brings to the mix. So let's go ahead and get started. So I want to walk through my mixing process using a track that I recently recorded. This is the old song Carolina Moon arranged for solo mandolin. Um, and uh, I'm just going to use a little snippet of it to walk you through my mixing process. Um, so I want to start by just playing you a snippet of the raw tracks. Um, I recorded this using two microphones, uh, the Neumann KM184 small diaphragm condenser microphone and the Royer R10 ribbon microphone. Um, the Neumann small diaphragm condenser tends to capture um, a more pristine sound, uh, it captures all the little transients, it captures a fuller range of, of um, frequencies. The Royer ribbon mic tends to capture uh, a, a mellower, a rounder sound, Lo lots of low frequencies, fuller low end, um, and so I like to balance those two microphones together to get the audio that I'm looking for. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is just going to play you the raw tracks. This is what, what was recorded. Okay, um, so my process when I used to mix was I'd start with the individual tracks and I'd do all kinds of stuff on them, EQ, compression, uh, all kinds of things. Um, and it got pretty complicated. Um, and sometimes by the time I got to the mix bus or the master bus, it was, you know, I just had too many things going on and it was a little bit of a mess. Um, so I've kind of reversed the process. Now I like to... Um, just do a few little tweaks to the individual tracks um, and then start working right away on the mix bus or the master bus to um, really sh start shaping the overall sound of the mix that I'm looking for and, and then I can make other tweaks as I go. And I find that works much better for me. So I generally do begin though by just putting a high pass filter on the individual tracks. So on the two mics in this case, um, on the Neumann uh, small diaphragm condenser uh, microphone, I'm setting a high pass filter using uh, the Tokyo Dawn Labs TDR VOS Slick EQ. This is a free plugin. All these plugins are either free or uh, are native to Reaper, which I'm using. Um, and there's a lot that this EQ can do. Uh, I'm not going to go into all that. And, and for right now, all I'm using it for is just to set a, a high pass uh, filter. I'm setting it at 96 hertz for the Neumann. I find that that just cuts out the, the you know, unnecessary very low end uh, of um, what's captured on this mic. And then on the Royer. I'm just using Reaper's native um, EQ plugin, re-EQ, uh, and um, setting the high pass filter on this one a little bit higher. You can see I'm setting it at about 217 hertz. Um, the fundamental low note, low tone of a mandolin is about 196 hertz, so I'm 
starting to roll it off just above that for the Royer. The reason that I'm setting the high pass filter a little higher on the Royer is that the Royer does capture a lot more low end than the Neumann and um, and it can build up and, and you know can overwhelm the, the sound a little bit. So uh, I'll play you that snippet again and I'll start with uh, just the raw tracks and then I'll add these high pass filters so you can hear the difference. Okay, so that just takes out some of that unnecessary low end, and then I can begin to uh, hear the, the audio mix I'm looking for better. Um, so the next thing I do is I just balance my mic levels. Um, and uh, this is a little bit tricky, but um, I'll try to do this uh, live here in this recording. Um, you'll see what I do is I generally um, just balance out the uh, the Neumann mic a little bit at a little bit of a higher level than the Royer. Um, that gives the overall tone a little bit more definition, which I'm really looking for and, and doesn't overemphasize that, that sort of super warm low end. Uh, so I'm going to uh, just balance out so that the, the Neumann is... Um, a little bit higher in the mix than the Royer, and I'll see if I can do this so that you can hear what it sounds like. Yeah, hopefully that gave you an idea. Just gives it a little bit more definition. Okay, and then I can go start going to work on my ma mix bus or my master bus and start shaping the overall sound. Um, so the first thing I want to do there is um, I'm going to put a multi-band compressor on the mix bus or the master bus. And here I'm using um, Reaper's multi-band compressor, Re-X Comp. Uh, I really like this multi-band compressor. I really like the way it sounds. Um, by the way, with all these plugins, for me, sound is always going to be my number one priority. Um, and I really like what, what uh, Reaper's multi-band compressor does to the sound. So what I do with this actually is, um, this is a little trick I picked up. I, I simply uh, tie all the thresholds together. I've got this divided into five bands, and I tie all the thresholds together. So I'm setting the same threshold across the board. You might say, why not just use um, a single compressor then? Um, isn't it doing the same thing? Uh, the answer is not quite. The difference is that with a multi-band compressor, even though the threshold is the same across the board, each band is responding independently. Um, so uh, it's only compressing at that um, range of frequencies. Um, and I find that what that does is it just creates a little bit of a smoother overall sound. It doesn't create a situation where um, you know your high frequencies are getting reduced in response to something happening at the bottom end. Um, so uh, it, it, this, is, this is what people talk about when they talk about the glue. So this is the, the compression glue on the mix or the master bus. Um, and it really, e even though, you know, there's not too much to glue together in this mix, since it's just one instrument, it does create a more consistent overall sound um, and just kind of smooths everything out. So... Um, I just play around with the threshold until I'm reducing a couple of dB uh, here and there, and uh, it just, just creates a nice sound. So I'll let you hear it before I put the multiband compressor on, and then I'll add it, see if you can hear the difference. the way that sounds. Um, next thing I want to do is put some reverb uh, onto the mix. Uh, I used to put my reverb on last when I was mixing, um, but I realized it's so integral to the sound that I'm, this, the soundscape you might say I'm trying to create, that uh, 
I really want to get it into the mix early so that as I'm shaping this, this overall sound of the mix, it's part of what I'm listening to. Um, so I'm actually putting two reverbs on this mix. Um, I'm u for for both in both cases. I'm using um, Reaper's uh, native plugin Reverb. Um, show that to you. Uh, but I'm not using their sort of built-in synthetic reverb, which you have full control over. It's you know a lot of possibilities there. I just really like um, natural sounding reverb um, and so I I almost all exclusively use convolution reverb impulse responses and if you're not familiar with that that just means that um, you know you take a reverb impulse response that has been recorded in a real space somewhere and apply that uh, impulse response to to your audio um, I've done a fair amount of work with this. I, I was privileged to be able to record some reverb impulse responses in um, a local cathedral, some of the spaces in a local cathedral. I mostly use those for classical recordings, uh, mostly when I'm playing my bullback. But there are lots of good free uh, reverb impulse responses available on the internet, and I've downloaded a bunch of them. So I'm using it for this particular... Um, instrument in this particular kind of music. I'm using uh, a reverb impulse response I called uh, that I found uh, from the First Baptist Nashville Church. It's a nice one. Uh, you can do a lot with this. I put some high pass and low pass filters on this reverb. I did a little bit of uh, pre-delay on it and a little bit of stretching. Um, and uh, so I'll let you hear what this sounds before I put the reverb on and then with the reverb on. Okay, and as I say, I actually like two ver two reverbs on on this uh, recording. Um, so the second one is also a convolution uh, reverb impulse response. This one, another one I found and downloaded. This one is called Medium Metal Room. I don't really know what that means, but uh, but it's got a nice tone to it. This one's got more high end to it, more of those sort of upper ringing frequencies. And so I just put a little touch of this on top of what I've already got, um, just to kind of fill out the sound. And I think it fills it out nicely. See what you think. So I'll play it before and after I add this reverb. Okay, so now I've got my reverb in the mix, and now I've got more of an idea of the overall tone I'm looking for. So the next thing I do is I do go back to my individual, one of my individual tracks. I go back to the Neumann mic, and I just happen to know that I like to do this based on, you know, past mixing. Um, so I'm going to go to the same EQ that I set the high-pass filter with. This is the Tokyo Dawn Labs TDR VOS Slick EQ. Um, and uh, I'm going to go here, and you can see, um, as well as the high-pass frequency, now I've added a few other things. Um, so uh, I am cutting a little bit around 822 hertz. Um, I find in the mandolin that that frequency, that, that 7800 frequency, just tends to be a little clunky sounding. It's, you know, so I like to take just a little bit of that out. And then I'm boosting a little bit here at uh, 1577 hertz. Um, that, that 1550, uh, 1580 hertz just is a nice spot for bringing out the kind of clear tone of the instrument without getting shrill or harsh. So I just boost that a little bit. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this EQ that I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> but I'll let you hear what this sounds like. Um, with just the high pass filter on it and then uh, uh, adding these other, uh, this one cut and this one boost. Let's see if you can hear the difference.
Okay. And then I like to add one other thing to the Neumann mic track here. I like to add a little compression. This is a super simple compressor. This is the Klanghelm um, uh, MJUC Junior. Uh, I, I I'll be honest with you. I don't very often use the Reaper native EQ uh, ReQ or uh, the native Reaper compressor uh, Recomp. Uh, just because I, for whatever reason, I find that the native um, Plugins in Reaper tend to just have a slight, what I would call a slight, almost rigid edge to them, or a little bit of a brittleness to the sound, maybe. Um, and so I'm usually looking for a little bit of a smoother tone. You know, every plugin that you use has its own slightly unique tone qualities. Really like this little compressor. It's really simple. You have almost no control over what it does, but it just thickens up the tone a little bit in a way that I think sounds really pleasant on the mandolin. Um, and so you'll see I'm just adding a tiny little bit. It's just going to move that needle, the VU needle, a little bit. Um, uh, but see if you can hear that thickening of the tone. I'll play it first uh, before adding the, the compressor and then with the compressor. Yeah, so um, you can see it hardly moved the needle at all. I'm just putting a touch on there, but but even without moving the needle, maybe you could hear just thickening up that tone in a nice, a nice, uh, very pleasant way. Really like that that sound. Okay, and that's really all I'm doing with with my individual tracks. Uh, I'm simply adding that high pass filter on the Royer because I just find that. The Royer's got such a nice, rich, mellow tone that there's not much else I want to do with it. Okay, um, so now I'm back to the mix bus or the master bus, and um, so I want to put some EQ on the mix bus or the master bus, and for this I'm using Analog of Sessions SSQ equalizer. Um, I think Analog Obsession puts forth some really nice plugins that just have a really sweet tone to them. And again, I'm really looking for a sweet tone. Um, so I'll show you what I'm doing with this EQ. I'm uh, putting a little high pass filter on the master, uh, 90, 94 hertz. So basically the same as the high pass filter I put on the Neumann. I just find, you know, if you. If you put a high pass filter both on the individual tracks and on the master, uh, it, it really cuts out that, that unnecessary low end, which is just going to muddy up your tone. Um, I'm also taking out a few dB here, about around 165 hertz. Uh, that's just more clearing out unnecessary mud down in the low end. Then I'm boosting a little bit here at uh, 320 hertz. Um, that's pretty low, but I, I really like that spot for the mandolin. It just, I find it brings out that, that kind of woody, that woody, rich, lovely low end of the mandolin. Um, and so that, that 320 area, I like to boost just a little bit. Um, I'm also boosting here at the um, 1570 hertz, uh, basically the same as I boosted on the Neumann mic, just boosting a little bit there to bring out that kind of clear, sweet tone of the mandolin. Okay, so let's hear what that sounds like. I'll, I'll play a little bit without the added master EQ and then adding the EQ onto the master. Okay, that that I I could hear definitely hear the difference there. Hopefully, you were able to hear some of the the clearing out a little bit of the low mud, bringing up just a little of that woody roundness at the bottom, and then um, a little bit more clarity in the the upper range. Okay, um, this is a fun plugin. This is the next one I like to use. This is another plugin from uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs. 
This is a dynamic EQ. Uh, the difference between regular EQ and dynamic EQ is basically a dynamic EQ is EQ plus compression. Uh, there's a lot you can do with, with this, but I do very little with it. I basically just use the dynamic EQ to um, reduce some problem frequencies. So in this case, the main one is uh, right up here around, uh, oh, 41, 4200 hertz. Um, I often find this is a sp spot where the mandolin kind of gets a shrill edge to it that I just don't like. Um, and I used to just put a narrow notch there with the regular EQ. The problem is if you just cut out that that EQ, uh, that spot with EQ, then your your track loses some of its um, some of its excitement, some of its vibrancy. Um, so this kind of plugin is perfect for for this. You can see I put a tiny little EQ reduction here, maybe um, maybe not even a whole dB of reduction. I'm not sure, but um, but what I've done is I've put some uh, some compression on here, a compression threshold. So what that does is that when that frequency pops out too much, the compression will reduce it. But when it's not popping out too much, it stays in the mix. So it, you don't lose the vibrancy, but you lose that, that shrill edge when it pops out too much. And the other one I put on here is uh, just not even any EQ, but just a little compression here at about 310, 315. Uh, hertz, which is, you know, it's funny. It's exactly the same frequency I just boosted in the EQ, but it is also a frequency that can easily build up. So again, I'm just using the compression to reduce the spots where it just builds up too much without getting rid of that nice warmth that I've added in the EQ. So I'll play this, uh, the snippet without this uh, dynamic EQ added, and then add it and see if you can hear how it's just reducing that shrill edge when it pops out and reducing that, that low uh, warmth when it gets a little too built up. Yeah, I really like what that does. I, it's subtle, but hopefully you could hear that. Okay, the next thing I like to add to the master is that this is another fun plug-in. This is um, Slate Digital's Fresh Air. This is an exciter. As I understand it, an exciter is basically um, a combination of EQ and um, saturation at some higher frequencies. And it just brings a little bit more vibrance to, to the mix, um, a little bit more uh, uh, radiance almost. Um, uh, I love this exciter because um, you can push it without it getting too edgy or shrill or, or you know, it doesn't really get distorted, which a lot of exciters do. A lot of saturation certainly does. Um, but it just kind of brings a nice, uh, a nice warm, rich um, <laughs> excitement dynamism to uh, to the upper ends of, of what you're doing. Now, I don't push this too hard. You can see I, it's got mid-air and high-air. Uh, this is your upper mid-frequencies. This is your, your high, high-frequency, your presence. Um, and uh, I don't push it too hard. I just put a little bit on just to give a little bit of vibrance to the tone. So you'll, you'll definitely be able to hear this. Uh, so I'll play it first without, and then I'll add it. Okay, I like what that does, as long as you don't push it too hard. Just a little subtle, a little subtle uh, vibration. Okay, um, and then really the last thing I add on the mix bus or the master bus is another EQ. And, and here I'm going back to the uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs TDR VOS Slick EQ. Um, why am I adding another EQ? after all this other stuff? Well, this is just sort of a last little touch-up, uh, just an opportunity to, to make any last little tweaks that I want to make to the overall sound. And in this case, what I've done is just 
cleared out a little bit more of the, I don't want to use the word mud, that's a little too strong, but just a little, little bit of the, you know, just the slight swampy edges that are left in, in the low end here. So I've just taken a little bit out at 125 hertz, and I've just taken a little bit more out at 382 hertz. And you can kind of see those are surrounding that nice, warm 310, 320 hertz that I boosted earlier. So if I just can take a little dip out on either side of that, I, I can get a little bit of a clearer overall tone without, without losing that warmth. So again, play it without and then add it. This is very subtle, but uh, you know, see if you can hear hear some of the that that low, you know, watery, swampiness just uh, being cleared a little bit more. Okay, and that's basically the mix. Now, the last thing I put on, you know, which most people do, the last thing I put on to the, the master bus is um, a limiter. Uh, now, I've already put a limiter on all of this because I didn't want to, you know, have you dealing with an uneven sound as I went through the various plugins. But I just, I want to show you these limiters. Um, so there are two that I like to use. One is uh, Reaper's limiter, which is Relimit. Um, and what I like about this is that it really shows you very clearly exactly uh, where your peaks are being reduced by the limiter. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I haven't really said what a limiter does. A limiter allows you to boost the overall levels of your mix um, while making sure that you're not, um, you know, you're not peaking, you're not distorting. Um, and uh, it's a great way to get a final level of definition to your mix and, and also bring up the overall volume. Um, I think for this, I'm just going to uh, play a little bit of the end of the track where you can see some of uh, those peaks being reduced, I believe. Let's find out. Okay, so you could see that one peak being reduced uh, between 1.5 and 2 dB. Uh, and, you know, if we watched the whole, uh, listen to the whole track, you'd see a number of peaks being reduced there. Um, now, uh, what I usually like to do when I'm figuring out my limiter is I like to um, start with Reaper's limiter, relimit, and, uh, and get it set right just, just where I want it. And then what I'll do is I'll usually take that setting. So there's a negative 2.2 threshold here. And uh, I like this other limiter um, by Tone Boosters. It's called Barricade. And I'll just, whatever I determine in, in Relimit, I just set the same thing here in the input gain. So 2.2 dBD, or dB, sorry. Um, and uh, then I'll just listen to both of them and see which one I like better. Uh, in this case, I've actually gone with uh, Tone Boosters, the Barricade. Uh, again, I find that, that some of Reaper's um, plugins have just a little bit of a brittle or rigid edge to them, and, and the Tone Boosters Barricade has a, a nice, slightly mellower feel to it, and so that's what I went with for this one. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is... Um, this uh, JS Loudness um, plugin. This doesn't do anything to the sound, but it allows you to track your levels really clearly. And I'll just show you, you know, it shows you your peaks, it shows you your uh, L LUFS um, levels, which is important for, for you know, your, what you want to get be at for your final levels before you, um, you know, before you publish your music. Um, and so I'll just show you again the end of the track, and you can just see how, how this appears. That's a, a really handy plugin. 
And that's basically it. That's my, my mixing process. There are a handful of other plugins that I use for different recording projects. Um, I figured in this video I would just stick to the ones that I used on this track and the ones that I mainly use for archtop mandolin recordings. Hope this was useful and thank you so much for watching.